Okay, we are about to start topic about Turex toolkit and virtual virtual UM interface. So, uh, what is Turex interface? Is um, it was uh, introduced uh, a few years ago, I think a long, long time ago, by OpenBTS project, and it's a custom interface between layer one and transceiver. I call it layer one because now it's not only base station, but um, Osmo Combi may also act uh, like a layer one. And uh, yeah, um, uh, basically it uh, assumes two, three UDP sockets to be used. Uh, are tasked me not to call one of them control because it's already used. It's a TRX control protocol. Uh, it's ASCII based and uh, looks very similar to HTTP protocol. You just send some response, for example, please tune to this particular frequency and you will get the response and even the response code like in HTTP, but zero means okay. And uh, there is also a clock protocol, uh, which allows you to get clock indications from uh, hardware, hardware clock indications. And uh, the last interface is data, and uh, here you send and receive uh, uplink and downlink bursts. In the, what is TRX Toolkit? It's a, a set of tools I wrote in Python because I have been doing some development of uh, Cosmo Con BB and TRX Con. I will talk about uh, this topic <coughs> later. And I had to test because at that time we had no, uh, we didn't support uh, transmit capabilities uh, in TRGSM and I had to test something, how, somehow test uh, anything I wrote. And um, this is why I written this, and I found out that it could be also very useful for different uh, topics. For example, uh, in general, it's uh, time to help with debugging of TRX interface. And uh, the first uh, thing I wrote was the fake TRX, which allows you to connect uh, Osmo BTS. It uh, basically basically emulates transceiver. And uh, it allows you to connect uh, Osmo BTS and Osmo Con BB together without actual radio hardware. So it's uh, basically virtual UM interface because you're sending and receiving bursts here. There's also some, uh, su uh, some supplementary tools uh, for uh, command ejection. For example, you can capture bursts on some interface, bit, for example, between base station and transceiver. You can inject them, you can generate random bursts just for testing. And good news is that this part is more or less documented and now merged to the master branch of Osmocom. Thanks to Harald for <laughs> helping with this. And uh, the how, can, can, how, can, how can one use a T-Rex toolkit? It, uh, it's, uh, as I know, it's uh, now used by some testing setups in uh, Osmocom project and um, in general it allows you to learn and research uh, JSON without hard
Yeah, I will try to repeat. Um, on the bottom of this picture, you can see the classical way of communication between layer, uh, GSM layer to three application like mobile or CCCH scan with uh, the firmware where Osmocon uh, is like a proxy between serial port and uh, layer one control protocol, which is uh, carried over a Unix socket. You can also connect uh, TTCN3 test cases to both uh, Osmocon and TRXCon. And your XCon is uh, also the application I wrote. It implements some parts of layer one, uh, for example, like scheduling and uh, burst coding and decoding. And uh, then we get the most interesting part, it's here. We have fake TRX application, which emulates uh, two TRX interfaces, one for Osmo BTS, another for TRXCon. And for Osmo BTS, you don't need any modifications because it's uh, like a regular transceiver like Osmo TRX and the Osmo BTS uh, doesn't even know who is it and uh, so on. So yeah, you can connect them. You can inject some commands using a simple tool called uh, control commands. You can, uh, for example, um, generate random bursts and uh, inject them, for example, reg bursts. And uh, also, one interesting feature I have is uh, TRX uh, sniff. Uh, it allows you to capture some bursts uh, on the existing TRX interface <coughs> record, and uh, then uh, if you want to uh, replay them using burst send tool. And uh, my use case of this tool was uh, that I, I had to capture, I had to understand how basically TCH half rate uh, burst encoding works. I captured some flow of frames on some particular time slot, and yeah. And this is um, how it works in more details. In fact, is also acts like a simple clock generator, and uh, as I already uh, told, the uh, uh, control and data interfaces are supported. Uh, the st status of this project is uh, we now have some simple simulation and randomization cap capabilities of both uh, timing of arrival and uh, RSSI. We have uh, support of uh, burst uh, capture, burst sniffing, and uh, burst replay then. And yeah, the, the future plans are um, make a uh, allow multiple base stations to work with multiple mobile instances. And this way we will be able to simulate some load base, uh, some, I don't know, stress, test, stress testing for base station or so on. And then, yeah. So, bit great. Thank you for your attention and feel free to ask your question. This is a little story about my uh, way to the Osmo DEFCON. <laughs> yeah. And feel free to append your questions to the array of questions and I will try, try to find the answer <laughs> for you. Well, not a question, just some comment. I think for testing, there's much more that we can test using using this than what we do so far. So at the moment, we use it basically just to um, to generate valid messages, uh, mostly signaling messages um, from the TTC and three test case uh, into the BTS, and then we check whether we receive it on on the AVIS side and vice versa. And the other thing we test is, um, I think, uh, timing advance and. Uh, uh, receive uh, power. Uh, yeah, but it's not implemented. Yeah. As I remember. For yeah, now. yeah, it's 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 very basic there, but I think there's a lot of things that we can test. Uh, for example, also in terms of DTX uh, testing, um, uh, because it's very complex. It's I think the most complex state machine we have in the entire Osmocom project is AMR DTX in in mm -hmm, Osmo yeah. BTS. So I think uh, there it uh, could uh, could help us to. Uh, really um, uh, test uh, the all the different cases and, and see how uh, the systems behave uh, in, in, in all these different state transitions. So it's very useful. Thanks. It's a very easy question to yeah. answer for myself, but I'll ask it. Anyway, what, what's, um, what is this 
CPU usage of the of the fake TRX is it is it heavy on? I, I measure this, and uh, on for example, if you would uh, use all time slots of a single base station, it will be on my CPU. It's Intel Core i5. I don't i5. Sorry, I don't remember. It is about thirty percent. Uh, thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Or about ten percent. Not too much. Yeah, I mean it's. Because there's no up conversion and, and anything like that, and no no actual RF uh, samples, but it's just the yeah. baseband burst bits. So you, it's basically the the encoder and the decoder that are uh, um, well mostly the decoder, probably the the Viterbi that's using the CPU. Yeah, the the main application of uh, uh, fake TRX it simply receives uh, UDP packages, uh, changes a few bytes in header, and send them forward them to the beta, uh, BTS and vice versa. Not too much to do. If you want, you can use PyPy or rewrite it to see. It's not required, I think. No, I mean, it's not the fake TRX. I think the question was more in general in the virtual setup, right? Where the CPU usage is or fake TRX specifically? Because. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's. N yeah. Yeah, it's because the the things that the TRX does are not done really here, right? It's that the the Viterbi decode and so on happens inside Osmo VTS TRX, and that's the same whether you have a real network or not. Um, but all the the signal processing uh, at sample speeds that is not done here um, in the setup. Yeah, Viterbi decoding is also happening at TRX clone application, but it's uh, now we support some SIMD instructions and it uh, works really fast. Any more questions? So, uh, if I have some time, I can. Uh, I would try to put uh, some one more small talk, and uh, it is about uh, GSM audio packet knife, because it's also a little bit related to the work we did. Uh, if you. Uh, because I used it, uh, used this in Osmocom BB project, and there was some discussions about uh, transcoding uh, in uh, uh, media gateway. So probably it uh, would help someone. I hope. Yes. So what is uh, JAPK? Many people here asking uh, me about this. What is these four letters? And it stands for JSM audio packet knife. It was initially written by Sylvain. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so I need to finish this. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it is uh, it can uh, it supports uh, formats uh, encoding and decoding. For example, you can uh, uh, I don't know use uh, AMR or uh, JSM files in in different formats. It uh, supports uh, classical GSM codecs like full rate, half rate, or I AMR. Uh, some some work uh, was done by Harald uh, to make it support also, uh, so you can uh, use your uh, audio subsystem on your uh, PC to play and capture sound. And uh, also some work uh, was done by Harald to support RTP streams, but it's unfinished, I think. And um, the use cases for of this tool is, uh, for example, transcoding uh, one audio format to another. It's a, uh, I think it's kind of uh, FFmpeg, but for JSM codecs, and you can yeah you know, <coughs> perform transcoding between, uh, for example, full full rate audio into AMR. You can. Uh, uh, listen for uh, real-time uh, RTP streams and uh, do any transcoding <laughs> if you want. And, uh, what I would like to say uh, about the previous state of the project is that uh, it was just a simple command line tool and uh, there was no testing coverage. We only had some uh, samples which uh, uh, we and uh, what we expect uh, after conversation, and that's all we had. 
and uh, we had no shared li libraries and it was a single binary and it was uh, not that useful for me personally so here you can see the example how to for example co convert one file to into another and uh, why not to turn this into a shared library it's uh, i think it's a good idea and um, audio coding support you, you can uh, for example use this library for audio coding in Osmocom BB in mobile application you can uh, we are currently doing some work of uh, implementing GRJS and blocks for GNU radio to support uh, audio coding for GSM and uh, it could be also used for Osmo media gateway to transcode streams and probably someone else would like to use this so uh, what was uh, what was done by by me is uh, I created uh, a new library called uh, Osmo JPK uh, I, we just just uh, some uh, some some work to put headers in common for smart home uh, projects location there is a separate directory Osmo con JPK and all symbols, all exported symbols uh, uh, have uh, Osmo JPK prefix now. It's a requirement. We have package config manifest so you can easily compile your programs together. Link against this library. And yeah, and we use, and now we use uh, Talak uh, subsystem for managing memory management and uh, we have some little bit better testing coverage but not, uh, not full yet. And uh, what was changed is that uh, GAPK was renamed to Osmo JPK because uh, many programs uh, have this uh, prefix and uh, it is uh, linked against uh, LibOSMO JAPK. Uh, now we use uh, Osmocom login framework instead of uh, simple printf calls. And uh, some basics about uh, the architecture of uh, Osmo JAPK. It, is, uh, it looks like uh, GNU radio flow graphs. Uh, so you just uh, need to create a processing chain. It's called QI in terms of uh, GAPK. And uh, they are um, not that complicated like you can create in GNU Radio, but uh, you have only source blocks, uh, processing blocks, and scene blocks. And uh, that's it. There is no scheduler. You just need to iterate through the chain yourself. There is some IP for that. And you can allocate a few processing chains if you want to work with them somehow. And uh, yeah, here is some example how to create your own block because uh, for Osmocom BB I have some little experience of creating my own block. And I will show some simple example. So all you need to uh, describe is uh, how much data are you going to receive from different blocks. Uh, in case of source, it's zero. Uh, how much uh, data are you going to pass uh, forward to another to another block and we have some internal state if you want to st store something for example file descriptors or so uh, sockets in case of RTP there is output buffer where should we write data we just finish which we process and there are two or even three I don't remember exactly callbacks so one is uh, prots it's just like working GNU radio and uh, there is uh, some destructor of, uh, we, if you allocate some memory this fun function should be used to free it and some meta information for login and here is a simple example of uh, how to create your own block this is um, file input and uh, what this uh, block is intended for is to just read some data from file and nothing else. And the first, uh, first uh, thing you need to do is to just uh, allocate memory for processing item, item sorry, and uh, define the type of this block. It's a source block and uh, you can put some name. You don't have input length because it's again it's source block and you have some uh, output data length. And you just uh, specify two callbacks, which uh, the first one is like work function of in GNU radio and the last is uh, this structure. And here is some example of how this uh, pros function can look like. So you just uh, read some data from file and put it into the output buffer and that's it. It's pretty easy and I recommend everyone to try to run 
or write your own block for JPK. And uh, it's uh, really easy to use this uh, library because we have not that much headers. For processing quiz and blocks, you have a uh, separate uh, header file for formats. I'm sorry, here should be codex. Yeah, for codex, uh, you can use this uh, header and all symbols have some prefix Osmo JPK. And uh, yeah, thanks. Yes. Simple processing quiz to handle your questions. Um, I have a question. Um, like, why not using uh, GStreamer or FFmpeg or, I mean, I'm not sure they actually support all codecs of JSM. But I then again, if we're implementing them, why not implementing them there? And just it's a, just a simple project. And uh, sorry, FFmpeg is uh, too complex to just to do some basic audio encoding. It's mm -hmm. my opinion. Okay. No, I mean, one of the fundamental differences, I think, to a lot of the codecs that you find out there is, uh, for example, that um, we have uh, not fixed size uh, of, of um, um, codec uh, frames. So, especially if you think of something like AMR, I'm not sure. I mean, at least that was, uh, uh, I think that's, that's, uh, that's the difference, but for sure something that can be looked at. I mean, if it even can. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, uh, yeah. Like CBR is not the only way to do it, and like it's just many VBR um, formats out there, and FMPEG perfectly works with that. I mean, the reason I didn't use GStreamer is because if you look at the original source code of GAP, um, like. 95% of the source code is like completely correct specific and the actual stuff I would have needed to implement and the framework part is like 100 line and I wasn't gonna introduce the dependency into JStreamer and JLib and uh, all the initialization code that I need to set up a JStreamer flow graph just to literally take you know the 26 byte or I don't remember how much and call one function and, and uh, and store the output. Uh, I mean, I originally that tool was mostly because I was dealing with the, um, you know, the format that is generated by the uh, the Rackal test set and uh, the uh, DSP API of the thing, where most of the stuff is not even correct stuff. It's reordering the bits because they managed to put all the parameters in you know 50 different fashion, uh, basically every possible combination. Uh, somebody uh, used it, so yeah. <coughs> It just seemed overkill, basically. And I think another advantage of this, uh, exactly why not FFmpeg, it's, it's much easier to embed this project, I think. Yeah, well FFmpeg is not that big either. Yeah, the, probably we yeah, have... You're kidding me, right? compare it to this, it's probably better. For sure, you can compile it uh, wherever, uh, in any way you want. You can only compile some codecs that you need exactly. And yeah, if if you have some time. Yeah. <laughs> Except on Windows. We have about five minutes, I think, and I, I'm going to try to sh show some real example of usage uh, of the JPK in. Osmocom BB, for example. Yeah. Can I also ask, or maybe sure, we're doing that together? Um, what was the status with ALSA and RTP streams? Like, is, would, it, would it be possible to capture RTP stream off the wire and play it through ALSA? Sure, this is exactly what I'm going to show you. You can easily you can try some simple live demo, I think. Uh, oh. JPK, we have more or less complete help for that. And uh, for example, you can uh, capture capture frames from from ALSA. I think uh, it's default. Just need to specify which device are you going to use for capturing. You need to specify specify the input format, and in this case, it's uh, a raw frame format. It was somewhere, yeah, raw PCM. 
And then you need to uh, specify which codec are you going to use and which format to be more correct. For example, if we would like to use, uh, I don't know, JSM full rate or AMR, yeah. And, uh, write this to some kind of output file in temporary directory like uh, A. This. Yeah, it's uh, just starting and we can try to send something, uh, say something here and it should capture. And now we can use the same tool to play uh, this captured stream. If I didn't break anything, it should work. We need the input file. We need input format, which we used. used here and uh, the format we are going to convert it to the raw PCM back and uh, play to also sync also yeah default playback device simple example of <laughs> yeah, I hear myself here, yeah. And uh, here we, we have some basic integration of audio we demonstrated at the Congress. Uh, we are only able to normally decode uh, downlink frames, but not uplink, because it, it's my bet. Because uh, I initialized the JAPK library at the, at the beginning of execution of a mobile application. And I should do this uh, when uh, exactly when we start call and we finish call, but uh, it was like a hack. So, I'm not sure is it. Yeah. Be somehow visible. Yeah, I will show this. So, uh, what's the idea then to use it with Osmo Com BB or uh, like do you have something in mind or is it already working there or? Yeah, I can even try to demo to show this in uh, in action. So, so while, here. while Vadim is preparing, um, so in Osmo Com BB originally uh, you could make voice calls, but the audio would actually be on the phone, right? No. Um, no, uh, we have MNCC in, in Osmo Com BB, exactly. That's what how Jolly did it. So the traditional way of using voice in Osmo Com BB is then that you have the uh, the voice on the MNCC interface and you can attach LCR to it or something like that. And um, this is exactly why I use uh, <laughs> Osmo NeedB because uh, we have LCR there working at last. Start. Until we repair support. And yeah, also here you can see the fake TRX in action. So we just start uh, base station and we have our own virtual network. And uh, we need to switch to mobile. Start TRX clone, you start mobile application. Yum, you, for example, I don't know. But uh, to show this, again, we don't uh, actually transmit anything. This Virtual environment. We put some virtual SIM card. Is Germany? And then we can uh, try to test. This is exactly what I demonstrated at the Congress. I'm correct. And this is how it works together with Asmacom BB. Nothing special. But, uh, we have some problem with uplink. <laughs> For example, there is uh, another number 993. And uh, the problem is that we hear sounds from the past. <laughs> when we started mobile, it already started to record the frames and put them to buffer. And we read them to probably sound of my keyboard and yes yeah, from the past <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah. 
And yeah, that uh, that's all. I, if we still have some time, we can show some source code, but I'm not sure we have. Yeah, if you have any questions, you know, as usually, feel free to ask.